mountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. The star. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, seizing never over a soul to reign. Star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Frankincense to offer have I, incense owns a deity nigh, prayer and praising all men, raising worship him, God most high. Star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect Welcome to worship. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany, the occasion when the Magi, the wise men, brought their gifts to Jesus. Epiphany will of course be marked this Wednesday, the 6th of January, known to us as Twelfth Night, and we tend to associate Epiphany with the ending of Christmas, when trees and decorations and pretty lights that have darkened our streets are put away for another year. And it's all a bit of a letdown after the celebrations of Christmas, even though, of course, they have been somewhat muted this year. At the start of lockdown in March, Mark and I put the lights outside our house back on. We hadn't actually got round to taking them down from last year, but we just thought that they would brighten our street during lockdown. But of course, little did we know that nine months later, we'd still have them on. And we haven't actually decided whether we're going to take them down this Wednesday or leave them on for a bit longer. I suspect that we'll leave them on. But in Ethiopia and Easter Orthodox countries, Christians actually celebrate Christmas on Epiphany. So it's an important religious occasion. In some countries around the world, people will exchange presents. And in Spain and in Latin America, Aldea dos los Reyes is as important as Christmas Day itself, the arrival of the kings. And the night before, children will leave out drinks for the three kings and there are parades and fireworks to mark the occasion. Although we as a nation don't tend to celebrate Epiphany as readily as Christmas, as Christians, Epiphany is a time of great celebration because it's a time of revelation when God showed his gift of his son to us and the Magi who brought gifts to baby Jesus knew where he was because of the bright star that shone over the place where he was born, a reminder to us of the light that shines in our world, the light that we can shine in our world too when we follow the teachings of Jesus. A simple definition of the word epiphany is a moment in which you suddenly see or understand something 
in a new or a very clear way. God sent Jesus into our world to show us a new way to live, to help us to deepen our relationship with him. And so before we come to God in prayer, we join in the Epiphany Carol, as with gladness men of old did the guiding star behold. Let us pray. God of revelation and epiphany, through the gift of your holy word as found in scripture, you have shown us the world that you desire, a world built on justice, overflowing with plenty and crowned with joy. Through the coming of your child in the manger, Jesus Christ, through his living, his teaching, his words and his acts of love, you have shown us how to build a world where love, peace and hope may reign. We are sorry for the times when we may have let you down, when we have not been the people you would have us be. May we follow the example of Jesus. Lord God, help us to live generously, love extensively, speak boldly and act courageously, so that the kingdom of your desiring with its justice, abundance and joy may become a present reality for all peoples of this world. Amen.
Now, one of the disappointments of Christmas Day was not being able to be in church and see what gifts people had got. We did see some on Zoom, but it wasn't quite the same. And I wonder what presents our young children got, what they were most excited about. What was their best gift? Well, I'm going to do an experiment to see if we can decide which is the best gift. Uh, Mark's going to help me. I've got six bags here and Mark is going to throw the dice for me. So can you throw the dice, Mark? Sure can. There we go. He's going to roll it now. You can't see it, but he's going to hold it up to the camera. And he's shown you that it number is one. the number one. The number one. Okay, so just to show that it's that one, I'm going to go O, N, E, number one. I'm going to tie a ribbon round this box and that's going to be the last one that we're going to open. Let me just do that, okay. And there is no break in this film, there is no cheating as we are pre-recording. There it is, that's our special box, we're going to open that last. Okay, let's see what we've got then, I'm going to start with this one. What have I got in here? Oh, a hat, a hat with two pom-poms. Fantastic, look at that. Is it the best gift we could get this Christmas? No, I don't think so. Great gift, but there we go. Put that back over there. What about, let's go for this one. This one, this is gonna be the best gift. The best gift, let's have a look. What have I got? Mm, bracelet, isn't that pretty? Really, really nice. Is it the best gift I'm gonna get this Christmas? No, I don't really think so. Let's put that one out of the way. Okay, this one, this lovely bag here. Ooh, oh yes. Oh, don't we all like a bit of Lego in our houses? You can spend hours building things with Lego. Look at that, fantastic. Is it the best gift I'm gonna get this Christmas? I don't think so. No, let's put that out of the way as well. Okay, where should we go? This one, right, let's have a look in here. Oh, wow, some Melton Mowbray, Melton Brown even, Melton Brown, not pork pie, Melton Brown bath liquid. Look at that, that's a mighty fine gift. Is it the best gift at Christmas? No, don't think so, not really. That can go. Okay, nearly there, let's have a look at this one. Mm. Oh, wow. A new mobile phone, look at that. Is that the best gift at Christmas? Ooh. No, no, I don't think it really is. I don't think it's the best gift at Christmas. And I did say that the best gift of Christmas was going to be the one that was chosen by the dice that I tied the red ribbon on. So let's have a look. This is, da 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 da, drum roll, the best gift of Christmas. Da 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 da, da. here we go. And it is chocolate Easter eggs. I wasn't expecting that. Easter eggs? And we're still not left Christmas? And you know, Easter eggs will soon be appearing in the shops. I will get most annoyed when I see them appearing next week because they'll be there on the shelves when Christmas has hardly gone, there'll be Easter eggs. But actually, when I think about it, that looking at an Easter egg at Christmas is actually a really good idea because it actually reminds us that the baby whose birthday we have just celebrated, who grew into a man, who came into our world, who show us how to love and care for one another, died upon the cross, but rose again, rose again to show us that we can never be separated from the love of God, the love that is found in Jesus Christ. And so actually, Maybe this isn't such a bad gift after all. Perhaps this actually is the best gift of all because this reminds us of the gift of Jesus. And I'm not gonna save them. I'm gonna eat them in the next carol.
read from Scripture. From the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 2, the Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we've come to worship him. Now when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, replied. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least amongst the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. And he sent them on to Bethlehem and said, Go, search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may go and worship him also. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen, when it rose, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Thanks be to God for these words of Scripture. Amen. Magi came from the East. Well, they would, wouldn't they, with an exotic name like that? They had seen a special star that had a significant meaning for them. Well, that's just the kind of reaction you'd expect from men called Magi, isn't it? They decided to follow it. Well, there you go then. What did I tell you? They travelled by night. How surprising. What else would you do if you were following a star? Stars disappear in the daylight. They came to the city of Jerusalem. Important people usually end up in cities. They like to stick to their own kind. They went to see the king, Herod. Told you. Keeping in with the best people. They told him they were looking for a baby king, the king of the Jews. And where else would you find a baby king except in a palace? Very logical. But King Herod wasn't very happy about their idea. He thought this baby would be a rival to him. Fair enough. You can't really have two kings on one throne. So he called his scholars, found out where the prophets had predicted that this king should be born and sent the Magi off to Bethlehem to find him. And I bet he didn't send a present with them. He asked them to report back to him so that he could go to worship him too. <laughs> and they believed him. I thought they were supposed to be wise men. They set off and followed the star again. And it led them to Bethlehem. What a surprise. The star shone over the house where the young child lived with his family. Not a baby anymore then, but I suppose it'd take them a while to get there. The Magi went in and offered gifts to the child. A cuddly toy in a warm blanket, I suppose. They gave him gold, frankincense and myrrh. What on earth would a child do with that lot? Magi? Where's their common sense? Then they worshipped the child. 
and added yet another religion to their eastern collection. Then they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod. Well, at least that was one dream that really did make sense. Not so foolish after all. So they went back to their own country another way. And that's the end of the story, folks. Is that what you think? Well, it sounds like it to me. Star followed, baby found, gifts given, finished. You need to read on, my friend. At least you do if you really want to become wise yourself. That was only the beginning. Thank you, Malcolm and Miriam, for that dramatic reading written for us by Marjorie Dobson. In churches, the three kings are added to our crib scenes on the Feast of the Epiphany. But who were the Magi who were referred to as the wise men? Well, sources suggest that they were priestly descendants known for their knowledge of the stars. They were astronomers and also their, their ability to interpret dreams. And they would have been non-Jews, of course. But what can we learn from them? Well, firstly, the wise men began their journey because of their beliefs. It was a common belief of the time that a special stellar phenomenon would appear in the sky to signify events such as the birth of a world leader like a king. The Magi in our story saw something in the sky that they believed was a long-awaited sign of the birth of an extraordinary king. And seeing the star, they began their journey, a journey that would take them outside their country and their comfort zone into unknown territory, but a journey that they felt compelled to make. They were even prepared to risk the consequences of disobeying Herod, who was known to behave as a madman when provoked. They followed a star, but as Miriam said to us, their journey didn't stop at the star, but rather it was only the beginning of the story. To explore this further, I'd like to share with you the story of the fourth wise man. You won't find it in the Bible. It was written by Henry Van Dyke, an American professor of English literature at Princeton. This is the story. It began in the east, in Persia, in the city of Ectabana, where there lived a man called Artaban. An astrologer, Artaban, met with scholars who read the signs of the times and watched the stars. They discerned that an important king would soon be born, one who would bring light to the nations. They concluded that the birth would take place as the planets Jupiter and Saturn passed one another. When the time came, Artaban set off intending to meet the other three wise men and join them in their journey to Bethlehem of Judea, where the king would be born. Deciding to take gifts for the baby, Artaban hid three jewels in his cloak, a blue sapphire, a red ruby and a white pearl. As he set off on horseback on the road to Babylon, he suddenly came across a body. Assuming it to be dead, he got down from his horse, intending to move it out of the way. To his surprise and joy, as he knelt down, he discovered a man very much alive, but in need of water and food and care. Artiban tended to his needs, all the while worrying that he would be late for the meeting with the other three wise men and would arrive in Bethlehem late. Sure enough, after arriving in the city, he, find, he found that the other three wise men had gone on ahead without him, leaving him a message to cross the desert and follow them. But Artiban realised that his poor horse was exhausted and it was only kind to purchase a camel to make the journey across the desert. And so he sold the blue sapphire, bought a camel and set off in the desert towards Damascus, Mount Hermon, Galilee and Judea. To his great disappointment on arriving in Bethlehem, he discovered that not only had the three wise men gone to Egypt, but so had the newborn king he journeyed afar to see. The parents and their newborn son had fled the soldiers of Herod the Great after he ordered the killing of all male children under the age of two years. But whilst in Bethlehem, 
Artiban met another young woman with a baby son who was afraid that soldiers would come and kill her child. Artiban travelled to her home and when the soldiers arrived, he gave the soldier his second jewel, the ruby, telling him that there was no child there. Taking the ruby, the soldier left without checking the house. Artiban then set off for Egypt, still committed in his quest to find the newborn king. When he arrived in Egypt, he encountered all manners of sickness, poverty, plague and famine, imprisonment and death. And yet he continued to search. After 33 years of searching, Artiban still hadn't found the one he sought and he decided to go to Jerusalem to continue his quest. On arriving in Jerusalem, news reached him of the man referred to as Jesus of Nazareth, who was to be crucified there that day. Artiban sensed that maybe this was where his journey was now taking him. As he made his way through the crowds in Jerusalem, a young slave fell at his feet, begging him for food. Fearing he would once more miss seeing the one he had journeyed so far and for so long to see, he initially hesitated. But as he looked at her kneeling at his feet, he offered the girl his final jewel, the pearl, to help her. At that very moment, the earthquake that struck at the time of Jesus' crucifixion shook the city and buildings trembled and crumbled. Tiles fell from roofs, one striking Artaban, the fourth wise man. Falling to the ground, bleeding, he heard a voice saying to him, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And Artiban experienced that epiphany moment when he saw clearly that he had found his king. And he realised that he had encountered Jesus the king whilst he tended to the dying, the needy and the sick throughout his many years of searching and journeying. And the reality is that our journey towards Christmas this year has suffered many interruptions. Our lives have suffered many interruptions, many dis delays and disappointments. And yet it is amidst these unprecedented times when our life's journeys have become so very difficult that we have encountered Christ. Those moments when we have felt love in our hearts. Those moments when we have witnessed love poured out upon those in need in our communities. Those moments when we have witnessed light shining in the dark places of our world. As I write this, the Oxford vaccine has just been given approval, shining light into the darkness of the situation. And yet it would be wrong to say the darkness didn't exist. There are many who find themselves living in darkness at this moment for many different reasons. And Reverend Scott Roberts says this, Faith is recognising light in the darkness, seeing the world as it really is, its beauty and its terror. But faith allows us to live in hope. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, that the light shines at its brightest in the darkness. We will continue to encounter Jesus in the darkness of our world when we continue to put our faith and our trust in him. We will continue to encounter Jesus in the darkness of our world when we seek to shine his light. This is the message of the story of Artaban, the fourth wise man, and this is the gospel message of Jesus Christ, the child in the manger. And this is the message of the Feast of the Epiphany that we celebrate today. Light came into the darkness through the gift of a baby boy, God's son. And even after the lights have been put away for another year, may the light of Christ continue to shine in our world this new year. Amen. Every 
star we see and all the songs we sing of shepherds on a hillside of goodwill and peace the lights on every tree and all the gifts we bring in every part of christmas we'll see our king for he that shines from the star. He is the shepherd watching over us all. And he is the peace that wise men still seek. A savior born that we might live. And so we bring our concerns for the world to God. Let us pray. Lord of all journeys, we pray for those searching for warmth and safety, for those fleeing persecution and violence, for those in temporary accommodation because their homes have been flooded or damaged. We remember particularly those affected by Storm Bella and by the earthquake in Croatia. Jesus, child of the crib, bless them with the gifts of hope and courage and may they find security in you. Lord of all our ups and downs, we pray for those searching for peace of mind, for those struggling with depression, for those facing the new year with sadness of heart or little sense of purpose, for those who face it alone. Jesus, child of the crib, bless them with the gifts of hope and courage and may they find comfort in you. Lord of all wisdom, we pray for those searching for clarity and stability, for businesses adapting to new trade agreements, for farmers and fishermen, for teachers and students amid uncertain term times and new ways of learning. For those in industries unsure when they can reopen and struggling with new regulations. For scientists challenged by new variants of the COVID-19 virus. For those simply desperate to see their families again. Jesus, child of the crib, bless them with the gifts of hope and courage and may they find reassurance in you. Lord of love, we pray for those searching for work, for those whose work is exhausting, 
remembering especially those in the NHS and the emergency services, the carers and those administering the new vaccines and for those who will receive it, for those searching for ways to feed their families and pay their bills and for those charities and organisations trying to help them. Jesus, child of the crib, bless them with the gifts of hope and courage and may they find strength in you. Lord of us all, we pray for those searching for faith amid anxiety and loss. For your church as she reaches out to those who are isolated, grieving or battling with big questions. And we pray for one another as we seek to offer our time and resources to our communities and those most in need. Jesus, child of the crib, bless us all with the gifts of hope and courage and may we find peace in you. Amen. from the realms of glory wing your flight oh all the earth ye who sang creation story now proclaim Messiah's birth come and worship worship Christ the King come behalf of the Lancashire West Methodist Circuit, may I wish you a happy and peaceful and healthy New Year. And may the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours. 
And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with us and those we love this day and for evermore. Amen. God bless everyone. Thank you.